Schelling loved the open road. He loved automobiles. And he loved small towns and villages as much, if not more, than great cities. Not the least of the reasons those sentences from American architecture and urbanism are so indicative beyond the fact that they demonstrate the commitment to social responsibility that wove through almost all of his writing is that they stop short of sermonizing to acknowledge the visual pleasures that can be found amid sprawl and the strip. Scully was always more inclined to romanticize than to scold. And that remained true as he underwent the shift of his thinking in the mid-1960s that we've been talking about, putting aside his belief in the heroic possibilities of modernism in favor of the view that there were important things to be learned from the architectural vernacular in general and the commercial vernacular in particular. For that, Scully owed a particular debt to Robert Venturi, later Venturi's wife and partner, Denise Scott Brown, as well as to his student and longtime colleague, Deborah Burke's predecessor as dean, the architect Robert A. M. Stern, who we see on the far left, who first introduced him to Venturi's work when Stern was a student at the Yale School of Architecture. Scully would come to write the introduction to Venturi's complexity and contradiction in architecture, in which he would assert that the book, published in 1966, was the most important writing on the making of architecture since Le Corbusier's Vers une architecture of 1923. It was a statement that seemed hyperbolic, and it won Scully few friends outside the Venturi camp. By the time the book was reissued in a new edition 11 years later, it had become something of a classic, and Scully's claim for it no longer seemed like a wild exaggeration. It was the deliberate anti-monumentality the irony in Venturi's architecture that most excited Scully. However, he was always more comfortable with the aspect of Venturi's work that could be described as a mannerist take on traditional architectural form than on the aspect that celebrated Las Vegas and the banality of the everyday. To him, the notion of an architect eschewing monumentality was exactly what American culture needed in the mid-1960s as an antidote to what he viewed as the militarism and overbearing displays of American power of the Vietnam War. Scully often described Venturi's buildings as gentle, and he made no secret of how different he found it from the work of the modern architect who'd been his first passion, Frank Lloyd Wright, or that of Le Corbusier, with whom he had come later to be equally besotted. In the years before he discovered Venturi, he had romanticized these and other heroic modern figures as representing a kind of existential power, seeing in their forms the embodiment of decisive human action. Not for nothing did Scully quote Camus at the beginning of that 1961 book, Modern Architecture, The Architecture of Democracy.